Previt, this is Salvation. I present to you, Geralt of Rivia and the Witcher 2. Let me meditate until night. What? Do you mean it can't be performed here? I didn't want to save, I wanted to... Oh, for fuck's sake. But where can I then? Thanks. Can we go? <laughs> I can't wait to meet this monstrous beauty. Her beauty's killed several men. Now you tell me. <laughs> like my friend Dandelion says, we all have to die of something. I'll have my eye on you at all times. So will she. Don't let her kiss you. I don't usually deny women foreplay, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Let's do this. <clears throat> well, well, how should we begin? Oh, God. I think this is the one. If our bodies could a song compose, my heart would inquire of your hands, pale and fine, if they'd grasp it gently to hold like a rose. Or, or treat it as a morsel upon which to dine. Who are you? Gorgeous one. I'm a poet, milady. I've come to praise your unearthly beauty, if you'll do me the honor of revealing your full self. Indeed. I shall reveal to you all my splendors. Prepare more than your eyes. I am a feast for all the senses. Come with me for the adventure of your life, fair poet. This is from the scrapbook, and I figured it would be the last version. Here's I should get Geralt. On the other hand, I've never plowed a succubus. I am so unsatisfied. Lovers who compose poems praising my virtues. Delightful, but I've never had a true poet perform for me. Now we can either let Dandelion get in there or let him get Geralt. Let me do this with him. Let me see, because I don't know if that's the wise choice. Or if I'll reload after. Wise is in the one that leads me towards the... to the... to the... Fucking idiot actually went in. I got him into this mess. I had better get the fool out. <laughs> right. You bomb. Shit, you stink. Is there any chance that I mentioned that I don't like this? Are we done? Never mind. Put up your sword. Where's well, Regis to deal with the succubus? I don't remember inviting you, Geralt of Rivia. Let Dandelion go. <laughs> you mean you won't join us? He's come to no harm. 
On the contrary, he seems very happy. Like all the other men you murdered? I've murdered no one. All who followed me experienced unearthly pleasures. You devour their energy like a swine gobbles spuds. I need their vital energies. I have no use for corpses. What will you do with Dandelion? I shall show you my intentions are pure. I'll release him when he wakes. So if it wasn't you, who killed those young men? I can seduce anyone and hold them spellbound for as long as I wish. Unfortunately, one fool fell madly in love with me. Unable to accept my nature, he's killing my lovers. Who is this lover of yours? A beautiful elf named Elias. He asked me to investigate the murders. His way of throwing you off his scent. Luckily, you're no fool. The very reason I think you're trying to throw me off your scent. Did he show you the victim's bodies? He told me they were buried. <laughs> By him. Yet he massacred the corpses first to make it seem as if beasts had attacked the poor souls. I'm content to have you looking into the matter. Just be sure to see it through. I'll talk to him, then I'll come back. I hope we can seal our friendship then. Talk to Elias, let's go and find him. Wherever he is. Probably in Vergen. I suppose. I hope. Front of the inn he was. Don't know if he still is. Let's try and find out. Well, yeah, that's another one. That's one of those things where you can choose. You can either believe her or you can obviously not choose not to believe her, to, to, to believe Alias. I happen to know the truth. Obviously. I found the succubus. Did you kill her? She claims you're the murderer. You were supposed to kill the monster, not chat with it. <laughs> I know what I'm supposed to do. I don't think so, not if you believed her. You lied to me. You knew a succubus had made its lair in the burned down village. I did. I thought you'd refuse to help me if I told you. You're right. I don't help murderers. That is pure nonsense. I killed no one. Liar. You fell in love with her and murdered your competitors. Succubi aren't exactly the most <laughs> faithful partners. True, I love her, but the rest is hogwash. If I'd killed the succubus, no more men would have perished and you'd have gotten away with it. You don't understand. She manipulated me like she's manipulating you. Jorvith will learn of this. You'll hang for your crimes. You're mad. I'm innocent. Right, let's go to Jorvis, let me... <laughs> let me go and... <coughs> chat with Jorvis. Don't try anything. I'll say it again. Humans are strange. Are they really? So are dwarves. Hmm. Your worship is over here. Yeah? I hope. Claim she's a virgin. I don't like you, Butcher. <laughs> Greetings, Gwynblade. 
Your Skoyatel, Elias, is murdering people from Vergen. Any proof? Elias is one of my best warriors. I found a splinter from a blade in one of the bodies. Compare it to Elias' weapons. I'll see to it. Elias must have learned that I know the truth about his madness. He's fled the city. Dr. Succubus, will do. I don't like you, Butcher. I don't like you either. By the way, I'm um, talking about sleeping with people. I don't remember exactly if Motel is the only one I can have on Yova's path or if there is anyone else. Um, I believe that's it. And in Act 3 I have no idea if there's anyone I can actually plow. I don't know. I don't think so really. I'll not be put down like some dog! Fight! You out of your mind, guy. And bye. Can I loot you? Nope. Succubus. I'm pleased you put an end to that fool's torment. You'll be blissfully rewarded. Disrobe and relax. <sighs> In the box by the bed, I left you a small gift. Something to remember me by. Goodbye, Witcher. Okay. I seem to be a little bit drunk. This is armor. Nowhere near as good as mine. But decent. Out. Yeah, well, that was that. And um, now I think we've completed every side quest that we can for the moment, leaving us with the Harpy contract that we'll do it together with Hunting Magic later on. <coughs> and that too. Hunting magic, I think, is something that I can continue now. Go to Stannis to get royal blood. Let me do that, though. This is the second. We are 
doing two quests for Philip Eilhart, just to recap. The one is the one where we need to lift the curse, where we need to find two items, the, dun the standard of the Dun Banner, which we now have, and one of the, s the sword, the yeah, of, the, of the, the leader, I suppose. The other two items she will get for us, and we also have to get certain ingredients for Regard, ingredients I'll say it again. For the Humans spell to lift, for to lift the the the, the uh, to, to to undo the poisoning of Saskia, and yeah, that's that's two of the things that we need to do. Greetings. <laughs> Oh, a witcher. And for the latter, we need royal blood. Let's talk to Stennis because we can. If we can. Anything else to steal? No. Pray tell, what compels you to disturb the Prince of Edirn, Witcher? I have a few questions. And you believe I should answer them instead of setting my dogs on you? I think your Royal Highness has enough foes. Here, abroad, in Vengerberg. The intricacies of succession are not something I wish to discuss with an itinerant monster slayer. Succession is the topic of choice in about every inn in the country. I don't know for sure, but I think the hangman of Vengerberg was the last to claim the throne. My patience has its limits, and at present, only my respect for Lady Saskia restrains my anger. Come to the point, or leave me be. Tell me, why are you here and not in the capital? The influential Good. nobles seek to undermine my rightful claim to the throne. Unrest ripples through the kingdom. Saskia has muddled the minds of the peasants, and the burghers demand more rights. And your opponents are seizing the opportunity. The Umrout family, in addition to being wealthy and influential, is closely related to the royal line. They could halt my coronation and put forward their own candidate. The families that remain undecided are the key. They must back me. They will do so only once I've shown myself to be a strong candidate. And greatness is something I can achieve only here, at the centre of events. And in the process, steal a little fame from the Dragon Slayer of Vergen. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where this fog came from. What exactly happened here three years ago? Hensel's mages committed mass murder. A dark day for the knighthood and all people of honor. But it was honor that allowed us to survive. There was no defeat. No victory. Honor stood against wickedness. Virtue against black magic. You took part in that battle? My father stayed in the capital. He was to defend Vengerberg. I took to the field. I wanted to stop Henselt before he crossed the Pontar, but I was too late. So I decided to await him at Vergen. Henselt's army was exhausted. We would have triumphed if not for that heinous act. Henselt had mages with him, and they cast a treacherous spell on the entire battlefield. A fiery rain fell from the heavens. Destructive, murderous embers which brought the battle to an end. I gathered the few survivors and withdrew deep into the country. The soldiers were terrified, but Henselt showed no desire to pursue. Only a master mage could have cast such a powerful spell, and I suspect he could not have accomplished it alone. I remember Sabrina Glevesig. Through the flames I saw her observing the carnage from her mount, dressed in a hunting suit. Straight-backed. Dispassionate. Sabrina. If I remember correctly, she's Henselt's advisor. Was. Henselt condemned her to death for casting that spell. The Kedwenis roasted in their armor, just the same way the Adurnians did. You know what struck me when all hell broke loose? What I found astonishing and even amusing? Going into battle, we sang our Adurnian songs. They intoned their Kedweni hymns to Creve. But when fire descended from the sky, our cries of pain were no different. <laughs> We all wailed as humans. For an instant, the magnitude of the tragedy brought together our two warring nations. I still have no idea where the spectral fog came from. I'm afraid I don't know either. 
You might be surprised, Prince, but I have more political experience than I'd like. The famous Geralt of Rivia. Invited to the table by Kalanth, Faltust's little favorite. I've heard you've even parleyed with the Emperor of Nilfgaard. Think I'm impressed? Kalanth is dead. Meave curses your name when she hears it. Faltus was murdered before your very eyes, and the Emperor, as I heard it, he thought you insignificant. <laughs> Are you going somewhere with this? Indeed. You should know that a king sometimes needs a hired thug to take care of dirtier deeds. If the thug is naive enough, instead of reaching into his purse, the king buys him with virtuous words, the flash of his rings, pledges of friendship. And when, having done his deed, the thug departs, swaggering proudly like a peacock, the king discreetly giggles. Truly, I never thought you could be so pitiful. Son of a bitch. Get out. Get out. Oh, can't I get a blood from you anymore? Not that I could. <laughs> Get out! Okay, I can't. As I said, not that I could. He wouldn't have given it me anyway, I think. Actually, I know. Let me... Journal. Oh god, else hunting magic. Ah, 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 ah. Hunting magic. Show it for Eilhard. Show it for Eilhard. Find the sword. How though? Find the rose removes the source, a source of power and the immortal and some royal blood. How the immortal, the rose of remembrance is with Triss, the source of the power I have and the royal blood I don't have. Assassins of kings. Wait for events to unfold. Okay, then this. Well, I buy this then. So, he thought it over. I'm on my way to the recruiting station. I don't know. What's the concern? My medallion. You wanted to discuss something? Your friend Sheila is conniving with Henselt. I know this, Witcher, but it's no cause for concern. Sheila is there to ensure Henselt doesn't fall prey to the same people who killed Foltest. We don't want him as sovereign of the Pontar Valley, but we also don't need Kedwin to descend into civil war. I've got Triss's bandana. Have you learned anything? Triss was here. Letho forced her to teleport. Why would he? There are easier ways to travel. Two of Letho's comrades, probably those responsible for Demoven's death, were hiding among the Scoyatel. When it became evident in Flotsam that the Kingslayer wanted to dispose of Yorvith, the Scoyatel leader gave the order to eliminate them. Letho had to reach the unit before the Elven messengers did. He could only do that by teleporting. I assumed that Triss wanted to teleport to me, but she missed the mark and they ended up in the gullies. What happened next? Letho left her in a gully, wounded. He probably thought that she'd diversify the local troll's diet. He himself went to see the Elves and massacred the unit with his comrades. They're somewhere on the other side of the fog. What about Triss? She escaped from the troll. Everything suggests she's somewhere in the area. I can assure you she is not in Vergen. She has to be here. Locate her. I'll try, but it will take some time. Have you learned anything else? Sheila ordered Letho and Triss killed. I can't believe that. Believe it. I ran into some mercenaries she enlisted to kill Letho and anyone found with him. She must have meant the other Kingslayers. Are you sure she knew Triss was with him? Are you so sure of Sheila? There was something going on between her and Triss. I sensed a lot of tension. A misunderstanding. 
Maybe. Let's find Triss and clear everything up. I need some time. What's going on out there? Let's see. What's going on? The peasants want to take pitchforks to Kingdom of Ensan. Why? The Dragon Slayer's servant is spreading rumors that Stennis poisoned Saskia. The commoners are in an uproar. They want to dispense justice. Where's the prince? Barricaded himself in his room, guarded by nobles. For the moment, the peasants are still respectful, but they are feverish. A fight is inevitable. Help us out. The situation is dire. I'm going to inform the other nobles. I don't have time for this right now. Dogs growl at cats, cats hiss at the dogs, a noble's a wolf to a peasant. Forget those animalistic similes and take care of it. I'll try to locate Triss. And should anything happen to Prince Stennis, remember, we need his blood. I remember. I will cut this short now. You wanted to discuss something. Actually. There's proof that the Wild Hunt is a vast accumulation of the power. Something that would interest mages, you'd think. To the mere mortal, anything that is not immediately comprehensible is suspect. The product of a conspiracy. And where there's a conspiracy, well, it's obvious mages must have hatched it. I'm a mortal. Though probably not a mere one. <laughs> I found the notes of a man who spent his entire life... Paranormal phenomena interests Cynthia, my uh, intern. Take this up with her. I found an immortel. Excellent. You wanted to discuss something? I found one of the ingredients for Saskia's cure. Show me. Interesting. Getting warmer, but still not there. It's as if I'd sent you to get me the sun and you'd brought me a candle. We need something <laughs> massive, an item of real power, Geralt. This is a dwarf's dream. Stolen and magically encased in this crystal, it would do if it were stronger. You know what this means? In addition to normal harpies, there are Solano in the area. Solano? Dream Snatchers. The only harpy species to develop something resembling intelligence. They magically bind dreams to mountain crystals. I heard they once inhabited this area. Solano live among regular harpies, but their lair should be full of stolen dreams. One of those would be powerful enough, I'm sure. You'd have to enter the harpy lair through the quarry. Unfortunately, the gate to the caves is locked and Cecil Burden won't open it. I asked him on another occasion. Stubborn as a mule, that one. But we must not relent. Saskia clings to life by a thread. Let me show you the desire contained in this particular dream. Don't be hasty to judge. Hmm. Yes, I can feel it. Whose dream is it? Cecil Burden's. In that case, I need to see the Alderman. Got a feeling he just might open the gate for me. <laughs> okay, I will not talk to her. Yeah, let me talk to Cynthia still. If she's in there, because... This is one of the things I might forget later. I'm trying to learn something about the Wild Hunt. Very interesting phenomenon. Like all mysterious things. Willing to share what you know? Well, I would be. Provided you found the notes of Morton Collis first. He devoted almost his entire life to researching the hunt. We could go into detail if you had his scribblings. I found Morton Collis's notes. So, let's see what you've learned. Oh, well, God. there are a few documented facts, but Collis notes the existence of plenty of myths and legends. Very true. Where shall we start, then? First and foremost, Collis studied the hunt's movement. Oh, it's well known that the wild hunt moves north to south, never in the opposite direction. That's what I remember, and Collis's research confirms it. I'm just having trouble understanding why that is. The retinue's trajectory brings it into our world at the North Pole. Thus, once here, the wraiths can only move south. That kind of makes sense. Collis claims the hunt's appearance can be predicted by observing the Orcan Nebula. And eclipses affect how often it appears. In any case, it arrives on the winter solstice, though not necessarily every year. Collis calculated that the hunt slips into our world in those years when the nebula is in the eastern sky. 
When I pursued the hunt, I passed through many abandoned villages. Well, the wild hunt abducts young people. What for? The race might need workers, warriors, or meat. Collis seems to favor the slave theory. What's the sorceress's take on the hunt? The topic makes them uneasy. Since the Council and Conclave banned the use of mind spells, the Wild Hunt has been a taboo topic. There's some link between mental spells and the cavalcade? Both addle the brain. Anyone who has come in contact with the Wild Hunt has experienced mental instability that either takes the form of insanity or amnesia. You see, the race emit a magnetic field that severely distorts perception and impedes brain functions. People say the Hunt's appearance is an omen of war. In our times, wars are so frequent, we might even consider flights of honking geese as their harbinger. The hunt traverses our world in winter. Wars usually break out in spring, but only because rulers wish their soldiers to die in battle, rather than of cold. Let's summarize. Based on his observations and calculations of the wild hunt's movements, Collis arrived at two equally important conclusions. The first was that the hunt is made up of knights who perished in various worlds, and have reconvened as a retinue of vengeance. His second hypothesis states that an unknown, extremely powerful force multiplies race, whose task is to travel between worlds in search of slaves. Both theories seem probable. Each time someone runs into the hunt, the race's magnetic field causes their mind to descend into chaos. By inference, another meeting with the hunt and its field should reverse the effects of the first. Perhaps. Someone who lost their memory or their mind on their first meeting with the hunt could recover either on the second meeting. But I'm afraid that's unproved. Anyone who has managed to escape the wraiths would rather die than meet them again. So, you can lose or recover your memory by meeting the wild hunt. Do you know something I don't? I have amnesia, but my memory's been coming back since a certain event. Since when? Since I killed a spectre, the king of the wild hunt. Let me quickly run into the fireplace, either that or so, no, um, says the burden, royal blood is the one that I'll do next, and I'll now spend a point somewhere. And I've already put away my notes because I thought I didn't need them anymore today. So, this tree. Uh, do I take two into venting? I think yes. Alright, this was Salvation, Geralt of Rivia and the Witcher 2 Bovite.